All right, everybody, welcome back to Healthy Living. We continue our discussion about the feet, how to take care of them, and what can possibly happen if you don't. Dr. Yitkalam from Express Care is here. Now, obviously, I'm tongue-tied right now because I can't wait to determine what is the difference or similarity between bunions and corns. Are they the same thing? Not at all. So, so your bunion is um, a, sort of a, a, a bony um, growth on the side of your foot, either side, but usually the great toe side on the side of your big toe. Um, where the, the toe's kind of like pointing in and there's this big bump on the side of your, your foot and it's, it's bony and it's from wearing pointy shoes and putting too much pressure on the top part of your foot so that part overgrows and that's a surgical problem. It, re it requires a, a, a surgery from which the recovery is usually about a, a week or two off your feet so it's a big deal. So don't wear pointy shoes if it's hurting your feet. And uh, corns are different. They, they can come through a similar mechanism. Corns are they almost look like a wart, uh, a hard little um, pad on, uh, on the bottom of your foot. There are foot pads, and you might have a little hard growth there. And it feels like there's a stone in your shoe when you're walking around if you have a corn. And corns come because um, there's just basically too much pressure in one area. So the way we adjust that is through our footwear, try to wear a wider shoe, and you can buy something called a corn pad, which is basically a uh, foamy band-aid that you stick on that area that has too much pressure, like a little donut, to take the pressure off of it. And then that's really the way to prevent corns, is to wear corn pads and change your shoes. That's another thing that's genetic. We're born with um, you know, different shapes of feet. Um, some have a higher arch, some have a lower arch, and if we're very heavy, our arches will start falling, meaning that they can't hold up all that weight, so they'll basically start stretching out, and sometimes people have a lot of foot pain with that. Um, as far as flat feet, quite often people, it never bothers people. They'll walk and run and do anything they need to do, uh, as long as they're not wearing shoes. Once they start putting shoes on, they may have a lot of discomfort. Now let's move to the part of the foot that can kind of really be gross if it gets somewhat of an infection. It's uh, those nail infections or fungus underneath the feet. You're starting to see a lot more uh, over-the-counter medication commercials yeah. and saying like, you know, if you have this incredibly disgusting <laughs> growth underneath your, your yeah. nail, some people want to like actually pull their nail back and pick yeah, at it and everything yeah. like that. That's the wrong thing to do. That is the wrong thing to do. So I want to say a few things about that, which is a great lead in. Um, that most of those over-the-counter things really do not work. Um, oh. Because the problem of the nail fungus is it's in the base of the nail. What you see of your nail, it, the, the hard part, the, the, that's, that's just uh, um, sort of like uh, the damage has been done. The living fungus is in the base under your cuticle, in the, in the, in the finger part, way back. And so that little white part that shows past, up like past the white part. Okay. Yeah. Way underneath. Way underneath, where you cannot reach mm. with any drop. So the way we treat nail fungus is with um, oral medication, meaning pills, to kill it from the inside, or we can use laser to heat it from the outside and kill it that way. So you can do things like pe people soak their toes in bleach or in Listerine to help reduce the load of the fungus. But if it's well established, it's way in there and you're not going to be able to get it out mm -hmm. unless you change the environment that your feet are in. Which is why, are they have, why do they have fungus in the first place? Well, you're sweaty and you're sweet. That's how you, how, how you got nail fungus, okay? Mm -hmm. The sweet meaning maybe your blood sugar is a little bit high or maybe you eat a lot of sweets or um, you know, a lot of meat as well, and um, then you're sweaty, your feet are in a closed toe shoe or in a wet environment all the time. So if you can adjust that, maybe wear an open toe shoe or slow down on the sweet food, it might help you get rid of your nail fungus. And if it goes untreated, what possibly is there? You know, what could people face? So, um, if you don't treat your nail fungus and you're diabetic, that's a big mistake. But in, if you're not, um, people just live with it. It kind of looks ugly, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't, you know, doesn't do anything. It just stays there. But it can infect other people. Like okay, your, so, like your family members. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so our final topic, talking about the feet, we started at the various parts of the feet, namely with the toes, and we'll end with the other side of the feet. So let's talk about the heel. Okay. Um, emery boards. Yeah. Are something that are very, very popular, or even you know, sandpaper or sanding or cutting surfaces. In yeah. the nail, nail salon, they'll try to cut. You. Yeah, some people, you know, you basically like sand down. Obviously, that's from you know your heels walking around, even on linoleum floors, mm -hmm. or you know, um, using shoes and everything like that. Yeah. Like you said, it it builds up like uh, somewhat of a callus. There's often dead skin there. Right. How often should we 
sand that part down before you know it gets either too painful or too raw where it begins to hurt when we yeah. walk. Yeah, well, you can buy what's called a pumice stone or the, like the sandpaper type of thing and, and, and sort of scrub it a bit. But the reason that it's hard and cracking is because it's dry. So what you can do is actually moisturize your feet. You can put some Vaseline or some nice thick cream on your feet before bed, put a sock on. Um, and, and, and do that every day. And if you do that for a while, your, your heel will soften and it won't be quite as hard and cracked. That'll help. Even like over the counter, can we use like lotions? Yeah, and lotions. The thicker, the better though. It seems like the feet are almost like, kind of like a walking contradiction, pun intended. <laughs> 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 but, but you know, you, you said, you know, um, moisturize your feet, but not too much because then, then you risk getting an infection, something like that. Um, well, you, you know, won't really get an infection. But one thing I want to say, too, is um, you, you should moisturize your feet if, if, you, if you have a dry heel. But one thing about the uh, foot fungus, you know, sometimes people think they've got athlete's foot between the toes. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's actually not fungus. So people will actually go and buy the antifungal creams and so on. Most of the time it's actually bacteria. So if you've been having a foot fungus and you've tried various Lamisil and whatever over the counter, it's not working, try a little antibiotic ointment. That might work better. And if it's still not working, we can culture it with a swab, like take a little Q-tip and find out what's growing and then give you the proper medication. All right, and this and many other services are available at Express Care right now. This is actually something you guys do all the time, right? All the time. And you live up to your <laughs> moniker of get in, get out, get better. We try. All right. It is an easy solution, everybody. If you're having any sort of foot problems, go see the friendly folks at Express Care. They're really, really nice, too. You will, <laughs> not, you. You will not regret that you did so. All right, stay tuned. More after this.